Good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone, and welcome to our Get Radical in the Word study. Um, it's Monday, August 3rd, and we are going to be reading this morning um, 2 Corinthians 10. My name is Darlene Jenkins, and I'm just happy to be with you this morning. Um, before we get started on our reading, let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, we'd like to just thank you once again, O oh God, for your mercy, for your grace, but above all, for your faithfulness to us. God, you are faithful even when we are not. And so we want to thank you for another day of life, another chance to allow the Holy Spirit to work within us to glorify God. Now, as we read your word, we're asking that your word will be a seed and that we, it will fall on good soil, may grow and blossom in our hearts, oh God, so that we may be the people, um, the individual that you would have us to be. For this is our prayer in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to get started um, again. I'm reading 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10. And I'm using the New Living Translation, the New Living Translation for 2 Corinthians 10. And it starts with uh, Paul defends his authority. Reading chapter, uh, verse 1, Now I, Paul, appeal to you with gentleness and kindness, with the gentleness and kindness of Christ. Though I realize you think I am timid in person and bold only when I write from far away, well, I am begging you now so that when I come, I won't have to be bold with those who think we act with human motives. Verse 3, we are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. Verse seven, look at the obvious facts. Those who say they belong to Christ may recognize that we belong to Christ as much as they do. And as we're reading, I'm just gonna take a break here. We've read seven uh, verses now. I hope you kind of look through um, the chapters or the verses and are thinking about um, our acronym that we use every morning, and I should announce this at the beginning, but let's look again. We're looking for a space, a sin to confess, a promise to claim, an attitude to adopt or adjust, a command to obey, an example to follow. So, so far we have read seven verses, and I've seen some things. I hope that you've seen them as well. There's a few um, examples in here and some other things. So um, we will, if you will list that in the chat, I see some have already, someone's already listed that. We'll go back after I read um, this 18 verses. After I've read the 18 verses, we'll go back and look at the chat and look for our uh, SPACE acronym. So I'm going to go back to now uh, verse 7. Look at the obvious facts. Those who say they belong to Christ must recognize that we belong to Christ as much as they do. I may not seem, I may seem to be boasting too much about the authority given to us by the Lord, but our authority builds you up. It doesn't tear you down. So I will not be ashamed of using my authority. Verse 9. I'm not trying to frighten you by my letters. For some say, Paul's letters are demanding and forceful, forceful. But in person, he is weak and his speeches are worthless. Those people should realize that our actions when we arrive in person will be as forceful 
as what we say in our letters from far away. Verse 12, oh, don't worry. We wouldn't dare say that we are as wonderful as these other men who tell you how important they are, but they are only comparing themselves with each other, using themselves as a standard of measurement. How ignorant. 13, we will not boast about things done outside our area of authority. We will boast only about what has happened within the boundaries of the work God has given us, which includes our working with you. We are not reaching beyond these boundaries when we claim authority over you as if we had never visited you, for we were the first to travel all the way to Corinth with the good news of Christ. Verse 15, nor do we boast and claim credit for the work someone else has done. Instead, we hope that our, your faith will grow to that boundaries of our work among you will be extended. Verse 16, then we will be able to go and preach the good news in other places far beyond you where no one else is working. Then there will be no question of our boasting about work done in someone else's territory. Verse 17, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. And finally, verse 18, when people commend themselves, it doesn't count for much. The important thing is for the Lord to commend them. So that is the end of chapter 10, as we were reading the verses. Um, again, we're looking for, I'm going to chat now, we're looking for the ascent to confess, the promise to claim, an attitude to adopt or adjust, a command to obey, an example to follow. And I see Barbara has joined us. Good morning, Barbara. She's saying an example to follow is in verse three, we walk in the flesh, but not, but we do not wage war according to the flesh. Amen. Thank you, Barbara. Yes. We don't use um, the weapons of the flesh. It says we actually use God's mighty weapons. And we know that God's mighty weapons are found um, in uh, Ephesians 6, 12. And I see also um, verse four, Pastor Fordham has the attitude adopt the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's exactly right. <clears throat> the warfare that we use, um, as I say, uh, we can find them in, in Ephesians 6, 12, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. So those are the weapons that we use. And Paul brings that out very clearly that we're not, he's not using worldly weapons, but he's using spiritual weapons. And those are the only ones that we can use to break down the strongholds. Uh, Pastor Fordham mentions in uh, verse five, example to follow. He says, bring every thought into captivity to obedience to Christ. Amen. It says we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Amen. He goes down to, Pastor Fordham is going down to uh, verse 17, in which it says, um, as scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. He said, let him, this example to follow, let him who boasts, boast only in the Lord. And that. I was thinking uh, leads us to, um, I thought about Psalms 20 and verse 7, it says, some boast in chariots and some in horses, but we will boast in the name of the Lord, our, our God. So that's something that we um, are using about boasting in the name of the Lord, boasting only in the Lord. Barbara mentioned an attitude to adjust, verse 12. It says, we shouldn't measure ourselves by men's standard of measurement. Amen. It says, um, 
It says, don't worry. We wouldn't dare say that we are wonderful as these other men who tell you how important they are, but they are only comparing themselves with each other, using themselves as a standard of measurement. And then he says, how ignorant in this translation. When I was uh, trying to really trying to understand this chapter of the points that Paul was making, I looked at some of the Bible commentaries and I found a Bible commentary by William Barclay. And in this verse, uh, this uh, verse he's saying that um, it is easy enough to say, I am as good as the next man. And no doubt it is true. He said, but the point is, we are as, are we as good as Jesus Christ? He is our true rod of measurement and our proper standard of comparison. And when we measure ourselves by him, there is no room left for pride. Self-praise, says Paul, is no honor. It is not his own, but Christ. Well done for which a man must seek. So we should measure ourselves by the measurement of rod of Jesus Christ. Um, so that was something I thought was very good for us to keep in mind that we want to measure ourselves against the, the standard of Jesus Christ. Um, as I look through some of my notes that I've made on this, I noticed even at the first of the chapter, Paul kind of changed his tone, you know, the other remaining chapters before he was talking about with compassion, trying to raise money for those who were poor, less fortunate in Jerusalem, and now he's defending himself. So something happened. I'm not sure what happened. They must have been criticizing Paul and his ministry, saying that he was not consistent. You know, he was very writing boldly, but very timid. And so I was saying that um, he, an example to follow in verse one is that he's actually kind of confronting them, but he's doing it with gentleness and the kindness of Christ. So that is an example. Even if we have to confront someone who may have said something or we have a misunderstanding, we should do it with the gentleness and the kindness of Christ. Um, also, it says, um, another one that I have is that uh, verse eight, this is, um, I guess, uh, an attitude to adopt. Uh, or just, it says, um, I may seem to be boasting too much about the authority given to us. The um, uh, attitude is that we have authority in Jesus Christ. That, I guess that's a promise, actually. It's a promise is that we have an authority, we have authority given to us by God. And that is, we learned that in Luke 10, 19, that he has given us authority. So that is a promise to actually claim that we should not be ashamed of using the authority. And that's what Paul mentions. He says, so I will not be ashamed of using my authority because we have been given authority by Jesus Christ. Um, Pastor Geese says, Paul is sharing what he shared in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. New creatures are in Christ are spirit beings walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Amen. We walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Also, um, one of the notes I had written is in verse 11, an attitude is being consistent in word and deed. You know, some were saying that Paul's actions um, or, you know, he was writing very bold, but he was a timid in person. But he's saying that in verse 11, yeah, when I arrive, you will see that my actions meet up with the letters that I have sent. So that is an, uh, an attitude that we should be consistent, I think, in our word and deed. We should be able to stand by what we have said and um, our actions to follow our words. Um, so that is something. Paula Major, good morning, Paula. She says in verse 8, our authority is for edification of the body, not to destroy. Amen. That is true. We build one another up with the authority given us, not to tear anyone down. Um, thank you for that thought. Um, also, um, I think we took, um, oh, I wanted to mention in verse 15, and this could be possibly a sin to confess. Um, it is, uh, we don't take credit for someone else's work. So it says, 
15, nor do we boast and claim credit for the work someone else has done. So that's something that we want to make sure that we are not doing is taking credit for what someone else has done, but we lift others up and give them recognition for their good work um, for that. Okay, I'm looking through the chat to see if there's anything else um, that anyone was saying. As you go back through the chapter, we still have some time. I just wanna uh, read, of course, our announcement is that um, we're looking for um, additional people. We're not only looking for people to um, read, but invite others. If you have enjoyed this um, devotion, morning devotion, I know I have, and if you have um, enjoyed it as well, please volunteer um, to um, read. Um, and you can contact Pastor Ogis. He can be contacted at 615 267 8690. If you know someone that would like to share their gift of reading and, and just thought, please invite them to contact Pastor um, Ogis. And if you would like to, please Pastor, uh, contact Pastor Ogis. And then tomorrow, we're actually having um, Belinda Bethia Smith. She'll be leading us through uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. So now I'm gonna go back to the chat and see if there's something that I missed. Oh, I see Barbara, thank you for putting one in here. It's an attitude to adjust. It is in verse 18. It says, don't look for men to commend us only look to God for his approval. Amen. That is so, so true. And what a verse, I think, to actually end on is that we um, want to make sure that we don't look for others to, um, we don't compare ourselves to others and we don't um, look, um, take credit for other people's work. And we certainly don't look or do something to be uh, commended or to get others' approvals, but to get God's approvals. Um, and Emma said, thank you, Emma. Um, congratulations for William, um, and also Jordan for graduating from OU. Yes, um, they um, had the official graduation this past Sabbath, Saturday evening. So um, we want to pray for the children and teachers, yes, as they start school this week and some next week. Thank you for the reminder, Emma. We want to, of course, pray for the safety um, and just for the parents as well. I know that um, it is very difficult for parents. Some, um, I know, are trying to work and then also helping their children to navigate uh, the school year, to deal with some of the anxiety as well as just the new normal that we're dealing with. So let's pray um, as we close out. If there's no more um, reflections, we'll just close out at this time. Um, so our heads, oh, Father in heaven, we just come to you. First of all, we just thank you for this time we have spent together, oh God, just learning about the jewels and the treasure that are in your word. We're just asking that we will continue to dig and to seek and to learn um, and to just value your word. We want to value your word, oh God, because we know this is what we use to um, build character and this is a reflection of Jesus Christ. So may we just take your word and to digest it and to uh, marinate on it and may we not only digest but may we use the word to change and transform our lives and change and transform others lives we pray god for the situation in our nation you know that the pandemic has been going on and we're just asking that as students go back to school and as teachers um, have to navigate this new normal that you will be with them give them wisdom give them comfort give them peace we're praying for parents as well as they're trying to get everything set up for their student, be it virtual or in person. We're just asking that you will bless the parents to give them the knowledge and the peace that they need to help their children to learn. We're just asking that you'll be with the students as well, the children, help that they will know that God is with them, that they will feel your presence with them, no matter if they're at home trying to learn or in the classroom, just be with them, help that they will feel your Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, as we start our new work week and as we start uh, um, this day, 
We're just asking for the leading and guiding of your Holy Spirit. Bless us and keep us. For this is our prayer in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I have enjoyed the time together and we're hoping and I hope that you have a blessed and wonderful day. Goodbye.